Welcome to the Vickers Machine Gun Collection and Research Association. The, in this episode of um, Small Arms Schooling, we're going to be looking at the development of smokeless powder and modern ammunition. Now, ammunition before the 1880s is used in what's called black powder, gunpowder as it's more commonly known as. This is full of problems. Gunpowder is really dirty and um, as a result will often create problems such as jamming. Now, with single shot rifles and single shot muskets that it's previously used in, that isn't too much of a problem. You know, you're not having the volume of fire that you will see with modern rifles and machine guns. But when the Industrial Revolution comes on, especially the second Industrial Revolution of the 1860s, what you're seeing is a development in arms technology where repeating firearms are building up more and more corrosion and dirt from black powder causing problems. Machine guns are not possible until black, the black powder problem or gunpowder problem is fixed. On top of that, it creates huge plumes of smoke. Now, on a battlefield, and this is one of the reasons why you see soldiers wear colorful uniforms. On a battlefield in the 1850s, soldiers are lining up in ranks. You, again, you don't have that rate of fire and the plume of smoke isn't so much of a problem. But as firearms have got more accurate and technology has changed, what we're seeing is this being a problem. You can no longer hide soldiers. Every time they fire a shot, there's a massive plume of smoke and you know exactly where that person is. And eventually you get this genuine fog of war. People don't know what's going on on a battlefield because of the amount of smoke there is. Now, smokeless powder, in the same way we say stainless steel, it doesn't, it's not that it doesn't produce smoke, it produces less smoke in the same way stainless steel doesn't, it does stain, it just stains less. What we see with smokeless powder is a development from really the 1840s to the 1860s are inventions through chemists. You know, when we think of firearms technology, we usually think of the steel, the metal work behind all of it, but actually all of this is a chemical reaction. Now, when it comes to smokeless powders, we're building on the developments of um, Alfred Nobel um, from the 1860s and dynamite and earlier gun cotton from the 18, um, 1840s. In the 1880s, the French have perfected the development of gun cotton and um, new forms of explosives in what is known as poudre B, powder B. It's developed by a French chemist called uh, Paul Viel, and this is a revolutionary powder. It will burn at a faster, well, it burns at a rate that allows more pressure, and more pressure means a bullet can be pushed further and faster than it's ever been before. So what we see is ammunition go from large, about 11 millimeter wide bullet heads, which are not traveling particularly fast, to really small seven, you know, six to eight millimeter wide cartridges. Ammunition where your really maximum effective range is about a thousand meters, to ammunition where your effective range is up to 3,000 meters. Now, these developments come down to this, this brand new smokeless powder. So we mentioned before, Paul Drabi. The French get there first in 1884. And this starts an arms race where other countries work really quickly to buy in and create their own powders. The British version of this is the very famous cordite as seen in 303 ammunition. Cordite is called cordite because it is literally formed in cords. It looks like small strings of spaghetti and it's invented in 1889 and comes into military service just a couple of years later. Now the advantages of smokeless powder, as we've mentioned, it smokes less. It means your soldiers can fire and remain fairly concealed. It also provides um, cleaner ammunition. It doesn't gum up the action of a firearm as much as gunpowder does. And on top of that, it's producing far more pressure. And that pressure means that it's able to push ammunition out at further and greater distance than ever before. On top of that, this ammunition is then combined with um, clip loading, which means you can reload faster. Now, one of the things we do need to cover is just what do we mean by ammunition? So. What we mean by ammunition is a cartridge, a self-contained brass cartridge, which will hold the powder. It is ignited with a primer. This is the cap in the center that starts the explosion. The powder burns, and that forces the bullet head down at a fast rate, you know, about two and a half thousand feet a second, down the barrel, out towards its target. So this is a really quick overview of why smokeless powder is such a revolutionary change. We always think of the hardware, the machine guns and the rifles and the artillery of the First and Second World Wars, but this isn't possible without that chemical revolution that we see in the 1880s that developed smokeless powder. 
that allows for the greater range and the greater potential of these weapons, more so than has ever been seen before.